Mahavira, also known as Vardamana, was the 24th Tirthankara Ford maker of Jainism. In the Jain tradition, it is believed that Mahavira was born in the early part of the 6th century BC into a royal Kshatriya family in present-day Bihar, India. He abandoned all worldly possessions at the age of 30 and left home in pursuit of spiritual awakening, becoming an ascetic. Mahavira practiced intense meditation and severe austerities for 12 years, after which he is believed to have attained Kavala Jnana omniscience. He preached for 30 years and is believed by Jains to have died in the 6th century BC, although the year varies by sect. Scholars such as Karl Potter consider his biography uncertain, some suggest that he lived in the 5th century BC, contemporaneously with the Buddha. Mahavira attained nirvana at the age of 72, and his body was cremated. After attaining Kavala Jnana, Mahavira taught that observance of the vows of ahimsa, non-violence, satya, truth, asteya, non-stealing, brahmacharya, chastity, and aparigraha, non-attachment, is necessary for spiritual liberation. He taught the principles of anakantavada, many-sided reality, syadvada, and nayavada. Mahavira's teachings were compiled by Indrabhuti Gautama his chief disciple as the Jain Agamas. The texts, transmitted orally by Jain monks, are believed to have been largely lost by about the first century when they were first written down. The surviving versions of the Agamas taught by Mahavira are some of Jainism's foundation texts. Mahavira is usually depicted in a sitting or standing meditative posture, with the symbol of a lion beneath him. His earliest iconography is from archaeological sites in the north Indian city of Mathura, and is dated from the 1st century BC to the 2nd century AD. His birth is celebrated as Mahavir Janti, and his nirvana is observed by Jains as Diwali. <laughs> Names and epithets Surviving early Jain and Buddhist literature uses several names or epithets for Mahavira, including Nayaputta, Muni, Samana, Nigantha, Brahman, and Bhagavan. In early Buddhist suttas, he is referred to as Araha, worthy, and Vayavi, derived from Vedas, but meaning wise. In this context, Mahavira did not recognize the Vedas as scripture. Buddhist texts refer to Mahavira as Nigantha Jainyadaputta. Nigantha means without knot, tie, or string. And Jainyataputta son or scion of Natas, refers to his clan of origin as Jainyata or Naya Prakrit. He is known as Sramana in the Kalpa Sutra, devoid of love and hate. According to later Jain texts, Mahavira's childhood name was Vardhamana, the one who grows, because of the kingdom's prosperity at the time of his birth. According to the Kalpasutras, he was called Mahavira, the great hero. By the gods in the Kalpa Sutra because he remained steadfast in the midst of dangers, fears, hardships and calamities. He is also known as a Tirthankara. Historical Mahavira Although it is universally accepted by scholars of Jainism that Mahavira lived in ancient India, the details of his life and the year of his birth are subjects of debate. According to the Digambara Uttarapurana text, Mahavira was born in Kundpur in the kingdom of the Vidihas. The Svetambara Kalpa Sutra uses the name, Kundagrama, said to be located in present day Bihar, India. Although it is thought to be the town of Basu Kund, about 60 kilometres north of Patna, the capital of Bihar, his birthplace remains a subject of dispute. Mahavira renounced his material wealth and left home when he was 28, by some accounts 30 by others, lived an ascetic life for 12 years and then preached Jainism for 30 years. Where he preached has been a subject of disagreement between the two major traditions of Jainism, the Svetambaras and the Digambaras. The Svetambara tradition believes that Mahavira was born in 599 BC and died in 527 BC, and the Digambara tradition believes that he died in 510 BC. The controversy arises from efforts to date him and the Buddha. According to Buddhist and Jain texts, they are believed to have been contemporaries, and unlike Jain literature, much ancient Buddhist literature has survived. Almost all Indologists and historians, says Paul Dundas and others, date Mahavira's birth at about 497 BC and his death at about 425 BC. However, the Vira Nirvana Samvat era began in 527 BC with Mahavira's Nirvana and is a firmly established part of Jain tradition. The 12th century Jain scholar Hemachandra placed Mahavira in the 5th century BC. 
Kalash Jain writes that Hemachandra performed an incorrect analysis, which along with attempts to establish Buddha's nirvana has been a source of confusion and controversy about Mahavira's nirvana. According to Jain, the traditional date of 527 BC is accurate, the Buddha was younger than Mahavira and might have attained nirvana a few years later. The place of his nirvana, Pavapuri in present-day Bihar, is a pilgrimage site for Jains. Jain tradition According to Jain cosmology, 24 Tirthankaras have appeared on Earth. Mahavira was the last Tirthankara of Avasarpini, the present time cycle. A Tirthankara, Ford maker, savior, or spiritual teacher, signifies the founding of a Tirtha, a passage across the sea of birth and death cycles. Topic: <inaudible> Birth. <inaudible> A member of the Kashyapa Gotra, Mahavira was born into the royal Kshatriya family of King Siddhartha and Queen Trishala of the Ikshvaku dynasty. This is the dynasty in which Hindu epics place Rama and the Ramayana, Buddhist texts place the Buddha, and the Jains attribute another 21 of their 24 Tirthankaras. According to Digambara Jains, Mahavira was born in 540 BC. Svetambara texts state that he was born in 599 BC. His birthday falls on the 13th day of the rising moon in the month of Kshetra in the Veera Nirvana Samvat calendar era. It falls in March or April of the Gregorian calendar, and is celebrated by Jains as Mahavir Janti. Kundagrama the place of Mahavira's birth is traditionally believed to be near Vishali, an ancient town on the Indo-Gangetic plain. Its location in present-day Bihar is unclear, partly because of migrations from ancient Bihar for economic and political reasons. According to the Universal history. In Jain mythology, Mahavira underwent many rebirths before his sixth century birth. They included a denizen of hell, a lion, and a god Deva in a heavenly realm just before his last birth as the 24th Tirthankara. Svetambara texts state that his embryo first formed in a Brahmin woman before it was transferred by Hari Nagamsan, the divine commander of Indra's army, to the womb of Trishala, Siddhartha's wife. The embryo transfer legend is not believed by adherents of the Digambara tradition. Jain texts state that after Mahavira was born, the god Indra came from the heavens, anointed him, and performed his abhishika consecration on Mount Meru. These events, illustrated in a number of Jain temples, play a part in modern Jain temple rituals. Although the Kalpa Sutra accounts of Mahavira's birth legends are recited by Svetambara Jains during the annual Paryushana festival, the same festival is observed by the Digambaras without the recitation. <laughs> Early life Mahavira grew up as a prince. According to the second chapter of the Svetambara Akaranga Sutra, his parents were lay devotees of Parshvanatha. Jain traditions differ about whether Mahavira married. The Digambara tradition believes that his parents wanted him to marry Yashoda, but he refused to marry. The Svetambara tradition believes that he was married to Yashoda at a young age and had one daughter, Priyadarshana, also called Anoa. Jain texts portray Mahavira as tall, his height was given as seven cubits feet in the Aupapadika Sutra. In Jain mythology, he was the shortest of the 24 Tirthankaras. Earlier teachers were believed to have been taller, with Aristonemi the 22nd Tirthankara, who lived for 1,000 years said to have been 40 cubits 60 feet in height. Renunciation At age 30, Mahavira abandoned royal life and left his home and family to live an ascetic life in the pursuit of spiritual awakening. He undertook severe fasts and bodily mortifications, meditated under the Ashoka tree, and discarded his clothes. The Akaranga Sutra has a graphic description of his hardships and self-mortification. According to the Kalpa Sutra, Mahavira spent the first 42 monsoons of his life in Astikagrama, Champapuri, Prastishampa, Vishali, Vanijagrama, Nalanda, Mathila, Bhadrika, Alabika, Pandatapum, Shravasti, and Pawapuri. He is said to have lived in Rajagriya during the rainy season of the 41st year of his ascetic life, which is traditionally dated to 491 BC. Omniscience 
According to traditional accounts, Mahavira achieved Kavala Jnana omniscience, or infinite knowledge, under a sala tree at age 43 after 12 years of rigorous penance. The details of the event are described in the Jain Uttar Purana and Harivamsa Purana texts. The Akaranga Sutra describes Mahavira as all-seeing. The Sutra Kritanga expands it to all-knowing, and describes his other qualities. Jains believe that Mahavira had a most auspicious body and was free from eighteen imperfections when he attained omniscience. According to the Svetambara, he travelled throughout India to teach his philosophy for thirty years after attaining omniscience. However, the Digambara believe that he remained in his Samavasarana and delivered sermons to his followers. Disciples Jain texts document that Mahavira's first disciples were eleven Brahmins, traditionally known as the eleven Ganadharas. Gautama was their leader, and the others were Agnabhuti, Vayubhuti, Akampita, Arya Vyakta, Sudharman, Mandidaputra, Mauryaputra, Akalabrata, Maitreya, and Prabhasa. Gautama is said to have appointed Sudharman his successor. The Ganadharas remembered and verbally transmitted Mahavira's teachings after his death. His teachings became known as Gani Pidaga, or the Jain Agamas. According to Jain tradition, Mahavira had 14,000 Muni, male ascetic devotees, 36,000 Aryika, nuns, 159,000 Sravakas, male lay followers, and 318,000 Sravikas, female lay followers. Royal followers included King Srinika of Magadha, Kunika of Anga popularly known as Bimbisara and Chitaka of Videha. Mahavira initiated his mendicants with the Mahavratas five vows. He delivered 55 pravachana recitations and a set of lectures <laughs> Topic. Jain Sutra Jains believe that Mahavira attained omniscience at age 42 under a sala tree on the bank of the river Rijupalika near Jairambikagrama. He preached, and died at the age of 72. The Jain Svetambara tradition believes that Mahavira's death occurred in 527 BC, and the Digambara tradition holds that he died in 510 BC. In both traditions, his jiva soul is believed to abide in Siddhashila, the home of liberated souls. According to Jain texts, Mahavira's nirvana death occurred in the town of Pawapuri in present-day Bihar. His life as a spiritual light and the night of his nirvana are commemorated by Jains as Diwali at the same time that Hindus celebrate their festival of lights. His chief disciple, Gautama, is said to have attained omniscience the night that Mahavira died. Accounts of Mahavira's death vary among Jain texts, with some describing a simple death and others recounting grandiose celebrations attended by gods and kings. According to the Jinnasena's Mahapurana, heavenly beings arrived to perform his funeral rites. The Pravachanasara says that only the nails and hair of Tirthankaras are left behind, the rest of the body dissolves in the air like camphor. In some texts Mahavira is described, at age 72, as delivering his final preaching over a six-day period to a large group of people. The crowd falls asleep, awakening to find that he has disappeared, leaving only his nails and hair, which his followers cremate. Mahavira's Jal Mandir stands at the place where he attained nirvana moksha. Artworks in Jain temples and texts depict his final liberation and cremation, sometimes shown symbolically as a small pyre of sandalwood and a piece of burning camphor. Previous births Mahavira's previous births are recounted in Jain texts such as the Mahapurana and Tri Shashti Shalaka Purusha Charitra. Although a soul undergoes countless reincarnations in the transmigratory cycle of samsara, the birth of a Tirthankara is reckoned from the time he determines the causes of karma and pursues Ratnatreya. Jain texts describe Mahavira's 26 births before his incarnation as a Tirthankara. According to the texts, he was born as Marichi, the son of Bharata Chakravartin, in a previous life. Topic: <laughs> Texts. Yadavarsabha's Tiloya Panati recounts nearly all the events of Mahavira's life in a form convenient for memorization. Jinnasena's Mahapurana, which includes the Adi Purana and Uttara Purana, was completed by his disciple Gunabhadra in the 8th century. 
In the Uttara Purana, Mahavira's life is described in three parvans 74 to 76 and 1818 verses. Vardhamacharitra is a Sanskrit kavya poem written by Asaga in 853 which narrates the life of Mahavira. The Kalpa Sutra is a collection of biographies of Tirthankaras, notably Parshvanatha and Mahavira. Samavayanga Sutra is a collection of Mahavira's teachings, and the Akaranga Sutra recounts his asceticism. Teachings Colonial era Indologists considered Jainism and Mahavira's followers a sect of Buddhism because of superficial similarities in iconography and meditative and ascetic practices. As scholarship progressed, differences between the teachings of Mahavira and the Buddha were found so divergent that the religions were acknowledged as separate. Mahavira, says Mora's Winternitz, taught a very elaborate belief in the soul, unlike the Buddhists, who denied it. His ascetic teachings have a higher order of magnitude than those of Buddhism or Hinduism, and his emphasis on ahimsa non-violence is greater than that in other Indian religions. Topic: <laughs> Agamas. Mahavira's teachings were compiled by Gautama Swami, his Ganadhara chief disciple. The canonical scriptures are in 12 parts. Mahavira's teachings were gradually lost after about 300 BC, according to Jain tradition, when a severe famine in the Magadha kingdom dispersed the Jain monks. Attempts were made by later monks to gather, recite the canon, and re-establish it. These efforts identified differences in recitations of Mahavira's teachings, and an attempt was made in the 5th century AD to reconcile the differences. The reconciliation efforts failed, with Svetambara and Digambara Jain traditions holding their own incomplete, somewhat different versions of Mahavira's teachings. In the early centuries of the Common Era, Jain texts containing Mahavira's teachings were written in palm leaf manuscripts. According to the Digambaras, Acharya Buddhabali was the last ascetic with partial knowledge of the original canon. Later, some learned Acharyas restored, compiled, and wrote down the teachings of Mahavira, which were the subjects of the Agamas. Acharya Dharasena, in the 1st century CE, guided the Acharyas Pushpadant and Buddhabali as they wrote down the teachings. The two Acharyas wrote Sakandagama, among the oldest known Digambara texts, on palm leaves. <laughs> Five vows The Jain Agamas enumerate five vratas vows which ascetics and householders must observe. These ethical principles were preached by Mahavira. Ahimsa non-violence or non-injury, Mahavira taught that every living being has sanctity and dignity which should be respected as one expects one's own sanctity and dignity to be respected. Ahimsa, Jainism's first and most important vow, applies to actions, speech, and thought. Satya truthfulness, applies to oneself and others. Asteya non-stealing, not taking anything that has not been given. Brahmacharya chastity, abstinence from sex and sensual pleasures for monks, and faithfulness to one's partner for householders. Aparagraha non-attachment, for lay people, an attitude of non-attachment to property or worldly possessions, for mendicants, not owning anything The goal of these principles is to achieve spiritual peace, a better rebirth, or ultimately liberation. According to Chakravarti, these teachings help improve a person's quality of life. However, Dundas writes that Mahavira's emphasis on non-violence and restraint has been interpreted by some Jain scholars to "...not be driven by merit from giving or compassion to other creatures, nor a duty to rescue all creatures," but by "...continual self-discipline," a cleansing of the soul which leads to spiritual development and release. Mahavira is best remembered in the Indian traditions for his teaching that ahimsa is the supreme moral virtue. He taught that ahimsa covers all living beings, and injuring any being in any form creates bad karma which affects one's rebirth, future well-being, and suffering. According to Mahatma Gandhi, Mahavira was the greatest authority on ahimsa. <laughs> soul Mahavira taught that the soul exists, a premise shared with Hinduism but not Buddhism. There is no soul or self in Buddhism, and its teachings are based on the concept of anatta non-self. 
Mahavira taught that the soul is dravya substantial, eternal, and yet impermanent. To Mahavira, the metaphysical nature of the universe consists of dravya, jiva, and ajiva inanimate objects. The jiva is bound to samsara transmigration because of karma the effects of one's actions. Karma, in Jainism, includes actions and intent, it colors the soul lesia, affecting how, where, and as what a soul is reborn after death. According to Mahavira, there is no creator deity and existence has neither beginning nor end. Gods and demons exist in Jainism, however, whose jivas are part of the same cycle of birth and death. The goal of spiritual practice is to liberate the jiva from its karmic accumulation and enter the realm of the siddhas, souls who are liberated from rebirth. Enlightenment, to Mahavira, is the consequence of self-cultivation and self-restraint. Anakantavada Mahavira taught the doctrine of Anakantavada many-sided reality. Although the word does not appear in the earliest Jain literature or the Agamas, but the doctrine is illustrated in Mahavira's answers to questions posed by his followers. Truth and reality are complex, and have a number of aspects. Reality can be experienced, but it is impossible to express it fully with language alone. Human attempts to communicate are nayas, partial expression of the truth. Language itself is not truth, but a means of expressing it. From truth, according to Mahavira, language returns not the other way around. One can experience the truth of a taste, but cannot fully express that taste through language. Any attempt to express the experience is sayat, valid, in some respect, but still a, perhaps, just one perspective, incomplete. Spiritual truths are also complex, with multiple aspects, and language cannot express their plurality, however, they can be experienced through effort and appropriate karma. Mahavira's Anakantavada doctrine is also summarized in Buddhist texts such as the Samanyafala Sutta in which he is called Nigantha Nataputta, and is a key difference between the teachings of Mahavira and those of the Buddha. The Buddha taught the middle way, rejecting the extremes of, it is, or, it is not. Mahavira accepted both, it is and it is not with reconciliation and the qualification of perhaps the jain agamas suggest that mahavira's approach to answering metaphysical philosophical questions was a qualified yes sayat a version of this doctrine is also found in the ahivika school of ancient indian philosophy according to dundas the anakantavada doctrine has been interpreted by many jains as promoting a universal religious tolerance plurality and a benign attitude to other ethical, religious positions. However, this misreads Jain historical texts and Mahavira's teachings. Mahavira's many-pointedness, multiple perspective teachings are a doctrine about the nature of reality and human existence, not about tolerating religious positions such as sacrificing animals or killing them for food or violence against non-believers or any other living being as perhaps right. The five vows for Jain monks and nuns are strict requirements, with no perhaps. Mahavira's Jainism co existed with Buddhism and Hinduism beyond the renunciant Jain communities, but each religion was highly critical of the knowledge systems and ideologies of their rivals. <laughs> Gender An historically contentious view in Jainism is partially attributed to Mahavira and his ascetic life. He did not wear clothing, as a sign of renunciation the fifth vow, a paragraha. It was disputed whether a female mendicant sadvi could achieve the spiritual liberation of a male mendicant sadhu through asceticism. The major Jain traditions have disagreed, with Digambaras the sky-clad, naked mendicant order believing that a woman is unable to fully practice asceticism and cannot achieve spiritual liberation because of her gender, she can, at best, live an ethical life so she is reborn as a man. According to this view, women are seen as a threat to a monk's chastity. The clothes-wearing Svetambaras have interpreted Mahavira's teaching as encouraging both sexes to pursue a mendicant, ascetic life with the possibility of moksha kaivalya, spiritual liberation. <inaudible> Rebirth and realms of existence Rebirth and realms of existence are fundamental teachings of Mahavira. 
According to the Akaranga Sutra, Mahavira believed that life existed in myriad forms which included animals, plants, insects, bodies of water, fire, and wind. He taught that a monk should avoid touching or disturbing any of them including plants and never swim, light or extinguish a fire, or wave their arms in the air, such actions might injure other beings living in those states of matter. Mahavira preached that the nature of existence is cyclic, and the soul is reborn after death in one of the trilok, the heavenly, hellish, or earthly realms of existence and suffering. Humans are reborn, depending on one's karma actions as a human, animal, element, microbe, or other form, on earth or in a heavenly or hellish realm. Nothing is permanent, everyone including gods, demons and earthly beings dies and is reborn, based on their actions in their previous life. Jinas who have reached Kavala Jnana omniscience are not reborn, they enter the Siddhaloka, the realm of the perfected ones. Legacy Lineage Mahavira has been erroneously called the founder of Jainism. Jains believe that there were 23 teachers before him, and Jainism was founded well before Mahavira whom they revere as the 24th Tirthankara. The first 22 Tirthankaras are placed in mythical times. The 22nd Tirthankara Naminath is believed to have been born 84,000 years before the 23rd Tirthankara, Parshvanatha. Although Mahavira is sometimes placed in Parshvanatha's lineage, this is contradicted by texts stating that Mahavira renounced the world alone. Jain texts suggest that Mahavira's parents were lay devotees of Parshvanatha. The lack of detail and the mythical nature of legends about Parshvanatha, combined with medieval-era Svetambara texts portraying Parsvites as pseudo-ascetics, with dubious practices of magic and astrology, have led scholars to debate the evidence of Parshvanatha's historicity. According to Dundas, Jains believe that Parshvanatha's lineage influenced Mahavira. Parshvanatha, as the one who removes obstacles and has the capacity to save, is a popular icon, his image is the focus of Jain temple devotion. Of the 24 Tirthankaras, Jain iconography has celebrated Mahavira and Parshvanatha the most. Sculptures discovered at the Mathura archaeological site have been dated to the 1st century BCE. According to Mora's Winternitz, Mahavira may be considered a reformer of an existing Jainist sect known as Niganthas, which was mentioned in early Buddhist texts. Festivals Two major annual Jain festivals associated with Mahavira are Mahavir Janti and Diwali. During Mahavir Janti, Jains celebrate Mahavira's birth as the 24th and last Tirthankara of Avasarpini the current time cycle. During Mahavir Janti, the five auspicious events of Mahavira's life are re-enacted. Diwali commemorates the anniversary of Mahavira's nirvana, and is celebrated at the same time as the Hindu festival. Diwali marks the new year for Jains. <laughs> Worship Samantabhadra's Svayambhustotra praises the 24 Tirthankaras, and its eight slokas songs adore Mahavira. One such shloka reads shocked face, Lord Jina. Your doctrine that expounds essential attributes required of a potential aspirant to cross over the ocean of worldly existence samsara reigns supreme even in this strife-ridden spoke of time pancham call. Accomplished sages who have invalidated the so-called deities that are famous in the world, and have made ineffective the whip of all blemishes, adore your doctrine. Samantabhadra's Yuktayanasasana is a 64-verse poem which also praises Mahavira. Topic. Influence Mahavira's teachings were influential. According to Rabindranath Tagore, Mahavira proclaimed in India that religion is a reality and not a mere social convention. It is really true that salvation cannot be had by merely observing external ceremonies. Religion cannot make any difference between man and man. An event associated with the 2500th anniversary of Mahavira's Nirvana was held in 1974. 
Probably few people in the West are aware that during this anniversary year for the first time in their long history, the mendicants of the Svetambara, Digambara and Stanakavasi sects assembled on the same platform, agreed upon a common flag and emblem Pratika, and resolved to bring about the unity of the community. For the duration of the year four Dharma Chakras, a wheel mounted on a chariot is an ancient symbol of the Samavasarana Holy Assembly of Tirthankara Mahavira traversed to all the major cities of India, winning legal sanctions from various state governments against the slaughter of animals for sacrifice or other religious purposes, a campaign which has been a major preoccupation of the Jainas throughout their history. Iconography. Mahavira is usually depicted in a sitting or standing meditative pose, with a lion symbol beneath him. Each Tirthankara has a distinct emblem, which allows worshippers to distinguish similar idols. Mahavira's lion emblem is usually carved below his legs. Like all Tirthankaras, he is depicted with a shrivatsa and downcast eyes. Mahavira's earliest iconography is from archaeological sites in the north Indian city of Mathura, dated from the 1st century BC to the 2nd century AD. The Shravasta mark on his chest and his Dhyana Mudra posture appears in Kushana Empire era artwork. Differences in Mahavira's depiction between the Digambara and Svetambara traditions appear in the late 5th century AD. According to John Court, the earliest archaeological evidence of Jina iconography with inscriptions precedes its datable texts by over 250 years. Many images of Mahavira have been dated to the 12th century and earlier. An ancient sculpture was found in a cave in Sundarahapuram, Theni district, Tamil Nadu. K. Ajithados, a Jain scholar in Chennai, dated it to the 9th century. Temples. According to John Court, the Mahavira Temple in Ozhan, Jodhpur, Rajasthan is the oldest surviving Jain temple in western India, it was built in the late 8th century. Other Mahavira temples include Jal Mandir in Pawapuri, Sri Mahavirji in Karauli, Rajasthan Muchal Mahavir Temple in Rajasthan Sankagata, Karnataka Jain Temple in Lakundi Radha Mahavirji, Bijapur, Rajasthan Bandavapur Jain Tirth See also <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>